Hello, thank you for joining me. Um, Today I'll be speaking on the life of Rufus Stimson. He's an American educator and he was known to have a major influence on the field of agricultural education, but to some, he's known as the father of supervised agricultural experience. His early life, he was born in February 20th, 1868 in Palmer, Massachusetts, which was not too far from Horace Mann or Benjamin Franklin. So um, a lot of these philosophers were born in the same area, which is interesting. I would like to test the minerals in the water to see what was up there. Um, He was born in a farming family. Not a lot is stated in history about his childhood, so I'm assuming it was a fairly normal childhood for him growing up, especially in the age of the late 1800s. Um, Education has become more established by now. He spent two years at Colby College and then went on to Harvard University. He had two degrees in philosophy, and he studied under William James, which we will speak on in just a moment. He went to Yale Divinity School and got a Bachelor of Divinity, which I didn't know much about a Bachelor of Divinity before I started this, and um, when I looked it up, it was more of a postgraduate academic degree awarded for um, related disciplines as theology, sometimes religious study. So this is mainly where he um, built on his philosophy education further at Yale. But while he was at Harvard, he studied under William James, which was a personal influence. William James was known as the father of American psychology. He was an American philosopher, historian, and psychologist, and was the first educator in the United States to offer a psychology course. So this was a very huge influence on Rufus Stimson. Um, William James was one of the most influential philosophers of the United States, so what a huge honor to be able to study under him. His family, much like his childhood was fairly straightforward and simple. He married Helen Morris in 1899. She was from Boston. And one of the quotes, which I found was very interesting from a uh, magazine, uh, a journal article about them, said the couple had few issues, which I've never seen written. Um, It was very clear that it just seems they had a very Um, straightforward and normal marriage. There was no children, and it didn't state if this was due to infertility or choice. Um, There was just no history on this. Professional experiences. He was the president of Connecticut Agricultural College, which went on to be the University of Connecticut from 1901 to 1908, and he was successful. He came in, and his quote Um, as he came into the president was preparation for practical farming is the principal aim of the college, which I found um, pretty interesting. Uh, He also consolidated some agricultural experiment station offices, purchased the college on a hundred acre farm, and installed the college's first electrical lights, which is just bizarre to think about in today's age. He then went on to be the director of the Smith's Agricultural School in Massachusetts, and this is when he was really developing this new method of teaching agriculture and wanted a place to implement it, and we'll talk about that method in just a moment. He went on to become the state supervisor for agricultural education um, in Massachusetts, went all over the nation um, doing different speeches and lectures, and then he was a research specialist for the U.S. Office of Education. He was known primarily for his contribution to what we know today as the Supervised Agricultural Experience, or the SAE. He wrote the Vocational Agricultural Education by Home Projects, which is what it was originally known as. It later became the Supervised Occupational Experience Program, or the SOEP, which um, our advisors as students in the university might have learned it in this method. Um, and now it is SAE Today. Um, Moore in 1988 wrote just a wonderful um, story of Rufus Stimson and his time in ag education and called him the father of the project method of teaching, but 
many refer to him as the father of supervised agricultural experience. The Smith Hughes Act of 1917, which we all know in ag education is such a huge impact, um, required supervised farm practices within this, and that was a direct result of Stimson's efforts and um, carried on into vocational and scientific areas. On top of that, he wrote the history of agricultural education of less than college grade in the United States, which was another uh, foundation for literature within ag education. He authored more than 18 articles for the Agricultural Education Magazine. Um, he was the associate editor for the Vocational Educational Magazine um, and was the president of the American Association for the Advancement of Ag Teaching and the vice president for the Association of American Agricultural Colleges and Experiment Stations. And so um, Rufus Stimson is all over the place in terms of building the foundations of what we see ag education as today. One really interesting belief that I had not heard of before, I've heard of Rufus Stimson um, in past ag education classes, but did not know that he campaigned to admit girls in the national FFA in the 1930s. Um, they would not be admitted until several decades later, but this was a quote that I found was really interesting. It says, we may feel that a man is better muscled than a woman to meet the physical stresses and strains of farming. And that, for this reason, vocational agriculture is more appropriate for a boy than a girl. And we may feel that mixed classes in some phases of project teaching are not desirable. Nevertheless, now and then a woman owns a farm upon which she is dependent for a living. And now and then a girl has an unmistakable bent for farming. Year after year, girls have demonstrated that they can profit from our vocational ag education. Under such circumstances, we must, of course, agree that there can be no discrimination as to sex and our entrance privileges. So he was way ahead of his time in terms of advocacy um, for those groups, and that didn't stop with women. It um, was also for improving education for minority populations. He said, just as there is no discrimination here as to race or religion, so there is none with relation to sex in our education program. Um, he was just an advocate for all education across all boards and especially those vulnerable populations. And so what a guy to found agricultural education and what an incredible, I mean, history that we have built upon um, from him. And so if you have any questions or you're interested in getting any other references um, besides the ones that I have listed, please do email me at hanford at ttu.edu and I will assist you in further 